Howdy y'all, my name is Price. I'm coming at you with something brand new on a Saturday, and this is Holy Potatoes, a Weapon Shop. Now this game is wonderful. Uh, I have actually played quite a bit of it, um, and I think that the easiest way to describe it is so it's kind of like recipe or an item shop's tale where you want to sell items to adventurers, but it plays more like uh, game dev tycoon or game dev story uh, in that you have like characters that you move around your blacksmith in order to um, have them increase the stats of the weapons that you're making. You'll see when we jump in, but um, yeah, I, I've played a fair amount of this, uh, but I, I decided I wanted to go and show you guys what it looks like when you start the game, and then maybe I'll show you where my file's at uh, much further into the game. Uh, so that you can kind of get like a taste of what it's like, but I don't think that this is one that I would turn into a series necessarily I don't think that the game really fits that style of play But I do think that you guys will love this game. So let's check it out. All right here. We got agent 46 <laughs> Where's that silly spud? I said to meet me here in the morning Maybe I should try and do like an agent 47 voice. He's really not like his grandfather in any way going by that letter he sent back Dear Mr. Agent, of course I'll come. What's good to eat in that part of town? That silly empty-headed fool. Of course, it's all the better for me to. <laughs> hey, Mr. Agent, is that you? Oh, you're here at last. Sorry, I got lost. All right. I've been waiting all morning. Stand back for my welcome spiel. <clears throat> Hello! You must be the grandson of Batata, the legendary potato smith. As the late Batata's only grandson, you have inherited your grandfather's legacy, his blacksmith shop. I was your grandfather's trusted partner, and we had an agreement where I own 99.9% .9 of this weapon shop. The 0.01% he owned will now be yours. I hope that one day you too can become a legendary potato smith like you. <laughs> I love that sound effect. Bambarubi? Let's work together and earn lots of starch. Oh, wow! Hang on. Starch? Isn't that what we're made of? Uh, yes, but it's also our currency. You don't know what starch is, don't you? Oh, starch! <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good with it. Mom's been giving me pocket money for years. Right. Well, don't worry, I'm great with it. I'll help you with complicated finance stuff and expand our business worldwide. Together, I'm sure we can make lots of starch. <laughs> Yay! But how? Well, for starters, you're going to need to forge powerful weapons to do that for us. Here, let me teach you how. All right, I can't wait. But first, do you have anything easier than Patalatatala Kartoffel P. Our Doppel Papa that I can call you? Aha! Um, welcome to our new shop. Uh, what is our name? How about Pigtato? I think that that I think that fits pretty well. And what is the name of our shop? Um, Stumps. Um, oh, come on. What's something for, like, potatoes? Um, fried Forge? Oh, man. Let's see. There we go. We'll do that. The Fried Forge. All right. Welcome to the weapon shop, Pig Tato. Here's 500 starch to get you started, courtesy of Agent 46. Isn't he awesome? Ugh. You're new in town, so obviously no spud knows about you yet. You learn fame and get famous when you start selling weapons to heroes. Top right panel shows the date, the current season, and the present weather conditions. That's all this stuff up here. I don't really know too much about the value of that information. Uh, all right. <clears throat> here you should meet Laura, your first smith. Smiths will work to make weapons for you. Click on Laura Craft to get started. That's <laughs> another thing about this game that's really great is um, it's lots of little like references to other games or you know other you know media through the potato characters. All right, clicked on Laura. All right, Laura is a designer. She's good at adding attack to weapons. Yeah. So if we look up here, we've got all of our information on the smith. Um, we can hover over her current job role, and later on, you'll actually be able to change their job roles. Um, everybody also has a um, an explorer level and a merchant level. So this will come up later, but essentially, essentially, explorers are how you find ingredients out in the environment in order to get um, you know stuff to make weapons with. And then merchants, uh, the merchant level gives you better prices on things, either a reduction when you buy things or an increase on the uh, cost when you sell something. These stats over here are um, kind of the current stats that uh, Laura is going to apply to a weapon when she um, works on it. So you can see her attack is higher 
than her uh, other stats. This is speed, accuracy, and magic. And we have these different stations that we can go to. This one up here is all about attack. This one down here is all about accuracy. This one over here is all about speed. And once this one unlocks further on in the game, this one's all about adding magic. Uh, and then down here we see what uh, Laura's salary is. And this increases with... Um, uh, their level. So as Laura becomes more experienced in all of her different class-based things and whatnot, she's going to be more expensive to keep around. So you have to kind of balance what level your characters get to and how high up you let them get in their um, classes with the um, amount of money that you're going to be making on the weapons that you're currently uh, crafting. Then up here we have mood, and mood probably isn't going to become too much of a factor until way later, so we might not even get to that point in this run through, but like I said, I'll show you guys a little sneak peek of my higher level smithery so that you can see kind of where the game progresses to. Alright, <clears throat> so she's a designer, she's good at adding attack to weapons. Smiths can add attack, speed, accuracy, and magic, yeah, that's what I just explained to you. So they need to be standing in the right spot, so I'm, I'm clicked on her, I'm going to send her over here to this station. And now we've got two other Smiths who joined us, Bulk Bogan, uh, who is a craftsman, and Russet Peters, who is a metal worker. Um, so the craftsmen focus on speed, and the metal workers focus on accuracy. So we can click on them down here in the panel, or we can click on them whenever we want to do something with them. Let's get to work on our first objective. We want to forge a dagger. So we got this big giant forge button in the middle here. We click that and we can see all the different weapons that we currently have unlocked to build. But we've only got the ingredients to build this dagger. <clears throat> so you'll see down here we have the ingredients uh, for it. And if you look at this short bow, we're missing rope. If you look at this ax, we're missing bronze. So the dagger's the only thing we can make. Now down here, we can see the hero uh, that is currently available that prefers this weapon type. So you, when you go to sell items, you want to sell them to specific individuals. Uh, and so here what we're doing is we can see that there is a thief. He is in Noob Village, which if you look just to the uh, below where it says max level 10, it says Noob Village. So that's the place he's located in. So we're going to have to send someone to that place with this item in order to sell it to him. The primary stat that he likes is speed, and the type of weapon that he likes is a dagger. So they will pay you more money if it's a weapon that they like, and they will pay you more money the more of their primary stat that is available uh, for that item. So we want to boost the crap out of speed for this one. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, the last thing over here, weapon growth. Um, here we see these little bars here. This isn't what it's going to look like. Like, this isn't what our stats are going to come out to. This is essentially the relative growth rates of each of these stats. So as you move up to higher level versions of weapons, you'll see that they get increased um, disparities here, which is nice because it means if you want to focus on speed and it has a huge speed growth curve, then that means that um, the little bit of speed that you put into it from your characters, it's going to go a long way. If we look really quickly at the short bow, we see it has higher attack and accuracy uh, growth curves, and then the axe has the highest is attack, and then with accuracy following that. So, anyway, let's get started on the forging. I'm sorry for rambling, but there's a lot of explaining to go on. So now that we've started it, we can see our characters are over here doing stuff. Can I actually... So one thing you can do, you can actually double up your characters on uh, spots. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep. Uh, and so what this does is I'm actually going to get more speed put onto here at the cost of attack. But since the character that we want to sell this to really only cares about... Uh, I think we... Yeah, we only have two slots at the moment. Um, since the character that we're trying to sell this to only cares about speed, we can make this choice with little negative effect. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, later on, you also get a... Um, a uh, little bar up here that allows you to fast forward time so you don't have to sit there for the whole time of them uh, building it. All right, so we got our primary stat of speed up to 36. Awesome. Oh, snap. We did it, Pigtato. I can't believe it. My first weapon. <laughs> don't go all starry eyed on me, Pigtato. We're not done yet. <laughs> I keep changing his voice up. I just, I can't do an Agent 47 voice, so I'm just going to make him be a uh, uh, cool old boy. All right, we're going to sound like this. There are tons of heroes around the world who need new weapons. Now that you've made a weapon, you need to sell it to them. I feel so happy. So happy I feel like singing. Let's get down to business to forge some weapons. Be quiet. I'm not done yet. Selling weapons to heroes lets them fight more monsters, which in turn lets them earn XP and level up. The more your weapons benefit a hero, the more fame you'll receive. So how do I know if a weapon benefits a hero? can't follow him out into battle. Or can I? 
Hmm. Pay attention. There's no adventuring here. You're a blacksmith. Aww. The heroes will let you know if your weapon's beneficial or not by giving it a grade. You might have made a really awesome staff, but if you give it to a rogue who has no use for it at all, you're not gonna score very well. That sounds like school. Uh, not really. You just need to pay attention to a hero's likes and dislikes. You got that? <sighs> yes. Cheer up, Pigtato. It's not that difficult. Now, how about continuing your song? That should cheer you up. <gasps> oh, do you like my singing? I'm gonna sing a lot more from now on. What? I, I didn't mean that. Did they send me flowers when I asked for iron? No. <laughs> Alright, your first weapon is done. Now let's go sell it. A potato's gotta eat after all. Click on the world map button below. Beep it a boop. And now we go to selling. So we click on the sell weapons part. We click on a place. We know that Noob Village is where uh, the thief is from when we looked at him earlier. So now what we do, we can look at who is here. Quit telling me stuff. I know how to play. All right, so you can hover over the guys again just to see what they like uh, and everything. You can see their current level. Uh, and then if we click on the Dirk, that's the weapon that we want to take. We have three slots. You can take up to three items per smith that you send to an area. And then we select a smith, and we want to pick one of them to be our merchant. I like Russet Peters. I don't know why I like sending him out as my merchant, but I, I just do. So we're going to start selling. So Russet's going to go out into the world. Okay. We can check his progress through down here. The bottom right has this just like kind of information stuff that it tells us about what's going on. Uh, I don't really pay too much attention to this. Um, usually these messages, when they're really important, they'll pop up. All right, so let's just go ahead and move Laura back to where she belongs over here. Uh, if we wanted to, we could start forging yet another dagger while we're waiting for Russet to come back. So why not? Let's just go ahead and get these two working on it again. They can put as much speed uh, on there as possible. All right, so click on the smith down here in the lower left. So we can see he's got these little exclamation points over him. We click on that, boom. Now we can sell our Dirk. So we see that if we sell it to this guy on the left, we're going to only give him plus one level and he's gonna pay us 505. This guy is gonna give us a better price on it. So, okay, come on, click, click, click. All right, <laughs> so um, not only is he gonna give us a better price, but because it's more oriented towards his needs by being all speed focused, he's also gonna gain a whole ton of levels. <laughs> so it's gonna be really good for us on the grade that he gives us. So we will click yes there. We're gonna receive the money once uh, Russet Peters gets back. So now these two, in having them continue to work on a weapon, um, we're building up you know, a nice little backlog of stuff that we can sell. All right, click on Smith here. What do we get? All right, so. Uh, what we see here is we didn't get a merchant bonus because Russet doesn't have a merchant level yet. Um, we see that the thief gained a ton of levels and if we look at like the general relativity here of this, we see that um, we have plus five was the levels that he got, he's level six, he's probably a maximum level ten and if we hovered over him we could probably see, yeah, max level ten right there. Uh, anyway, and he gave us a weapon rating of A, that's great. So we sold our first Dirk, and now Russet's back, so we'll drop him off over here, where he belongs, where he does uh, accuracy. Um, look, your shop received fame, tell your mom, your dad, your cat, everybody. So yeah, we got some fame up here, uh, and now uh, forging another weapon is our next goal. So guess what, how great is that? Because we were already starting that up. Okay, good to go. And I focused on speed again, because you can always sell weapons to the same people uh, over and over and over again. Uh, so sometimes if you know one weapon is good, you might as well give it a shot. All right, let's take this Dirk. We're gonna sell it once again to the same guy because why not is what I say. Um, and this time we'll wait uh, for our objectives to be completed just to see what happens. Uh, okay, and Russet, you're good. All right, who should you sell your weapon to? Definitely that guy. It's gonna be even better for him. Uh, and hex to the yeah. All right, and let's... Speed up time a little bit, and what did we get out of this? 10.35, that was a really good sale. You gained two levels, um, it's worth every starch, and yeah, and now we see that um, Russet's mood is going down, but I, like I said before, I don't think that starts to matter really um, at this point. Um, let's see, what else? Wandering blacksmith stops to consult at your forge, he demands a fee for his great advice. Uh, okay, so this just has like a random effect on sales in Noob Village. These kinds of things will pop up from time to time. All right, what else do we have now? We can now buy materials. Let's go ahead and shop for some items. The only places that we have unlocked are Noob Village, and uh, so that's what we're going to have to deal with. Let's see, what do we want to buy? Well, we would like to buy some rope, I think. 
And we would like to buy some iron, probably. How much money do we have? 2,000? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Uh, let's buy some bronze, because I think that's what the axe needed. I don't think we need any magic dust. So now, between all these things, I think we're good. So let's go ahead and we'll send our merchant man out there, because we might be able to gain a level on that. Can I do... I can't do exploring yet. So we're just going to wait. So with the uh, buying of ingredients, you don't have to do a second step there. He'll just come right back. Click on that. Huzzah! We got ourselves some materials. Bring Russell back. Let's send Lara, or Laura over here. Buy five ropes. Oh, I should have paid attention. Should have paid attention. Shop for items. One more rope. Uh, all right, Russell. Well, now you will gain a level from this. A merchant level. Fast forwarding. Where's Pigtato when you need him? Let him sing us a little fast forwarding song. Okay. There we go. We got our ropes. We completed our objective up here. Now, what do we got to do? Tell us, great Agent 46. Forge a bow. All right. Let's grab a bow. Who do we got? We got a guy who likes speed and a guy who likes accuracy. Well, let's go ahead and do one that's focused on accuracy because a bow has a great accuracy curve. Um, and then he doesn't have an other favorite. So before I start the forge, let's see. She's got a six. Oh, didn't mean to switch him out. He's got a three. Okay, so we're going to put... We're going to leave Bulk here. Um, and we're going to send Laura over here. Because she's got a slightly higher accuracy bonus. So she'll give a little bit more than Bulk would. And uh, let's start up this rope, huh? Oh, now we can boost. That's great. So the way that a boost works is at the beginning of when you... Um, Start a weapon, or well, whenever you want throughout the process. You start with one boost, all right? You can get more through special events. You click on whichever stat you want to boost. You click on the person who you have uh, or who you want to pay in order to boost it. Uh, usually paying for it until I think really, really later on in the game isn't um, that valuable. So with Russet, I'm going to go ahead and start boosting this. And you'll see he'll add some stats to the item. Now, for right now, with how low level our characters are, they don't really do a lot with boosting. Uh, but it's still worth it. And if their mood is better, then they also boost quite a lot. Um, uh, you'll, instead of doing like four or five boosts, they'll maybe do six, seven, or eight boosts. So it's also worth it to um, have their mood really high before you start forging the weapon. All right, we've got our accuracy up to 41. Not bad on this short boat. You can name the weapons. Um, I never really do because you go through them so quickly that uh, it's not quite as engaging as like game dev story. Um, in that aspect of it. Let's go sell that weapon. Russet, where you at, my friend? Get out there, level 2 merchant. Alright, get the archer to level 6. That's our current goal. So, let's wait for Russet to get back, because he's our accuracy guy. Did I not... I might, I might have made it for the wrong guy. Let's see. <laughs> You're the one who wants it. You are the archer. Okay, cool. And he's a ranger. So this is the guy that we want to level up anyways. I think this might do it on one go, because he's going to get five levels. Perfect. All right. Let's just get Russet back here as quickly as possible. All right, and you see we got a little $42 or starch bonus. Uh, we got a A rating. Solid all around. Solid all around. Okay, Archer got to level six. Let's see how this goal gets completed. Get two heroes to max level. Okay. All right. At this point, I think uh, I'm going to just skip ahead and I'm going to show you guys um, one of my or my file where I'm much further into the game. Um, but I think like overall, let's just look at the map really quickly just so I can kind of uh, say a couple of more things about this before we move to um, looking at that. And that way, if there are some of you who just don't want to have any kind of spoiler or like future look at this game, you can just go ahead and stop watching the video before I cut ahead to the new footage. So um, you can unlock new areas. So these two areas here, uh, you will unlock by earning tickets. Uh, and these tickets you earn by completing missions or gaining fame or whatever. Um, uh, fame, obviously, you get that from making high-level weapons, for making nicely graded weapons. You'll see that we have a level up here in our forge. What happens is once you've sufficiently done all of the missions inside of a zone, you will actually go to a new zone. So there will be new, an, an entirely new map setup, new things to unlock, um, new levels and tiers of weapons, and you start to be able to upgrade your shop so then you can have, instead of, say, two people at each station, you can have three or four. You can put items on the floor. You can do all kinds of things uh, that will boost your stats and whatnot. Um, what else? Uh, oh, exploration is one of the activities here. So exploration, if you clicked on that, you'd send your character over to a... Uh, 
shop uh, or over to a place and they would start to explore for materials and that's how you can research and come up with new items. There is a training thing that you can get and so you can send uh, individuals to different areas in order to gain experience so you can start to level them up quicker that way if you want to uh, or if you have a whole bunch of guys out so you don't really want to be working on a weapon without your whole team you can send some off to train. Uh, we have a vacation button here so when characters moods get below a certain level you can um, send them out to go and go on vacation and that way they'll come back with their mood re-energized uh, and then finally over here we have the ability to unlock those other areas with those tickets and things okay so from here I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of this game and I'm gonna jump into my main game so you guys can see what that's like a little bit further on and some of the more crazy stuff that happens in the game uh, and if you don't want any kinds of spoiler type things, thank you for watching uh, this far into the video and just go ahead and pop on over to some other video that we got. I would not feel um, bad for you wanting to skip out on seeing some of the stuff in the future. But for those of you who want a little jump start at seeing kind of where this game heads, then uh, uh, just stay tuned. All right. See you all on the other side. All right, y'all. Here is my crazy, super powerful level three uh, blacksmith called Tuber Tacklers. I'm going to pause real quick. Uh, and so here I um, <clears throat> have a whole bunch of stuff going on. First and foremost, I got Russet Peters. He's on his way back from vacation. His mood is elated. He feels like he can take on the world. I'm going to put him here. As you can see, I have four slots at each of my stations now. My uh, place is much larger. Um, you see, I can even move around my main character, who this is Price Tato, not Pig Tato. And wherever he is, he's going to give a little boost to the stats that are being made at that place. You may also notice this cute little guy up here. I have a dog. He is over here. He can do the same thing that Price can do. You can um, send him over to a station, and then whoever is building a thing there um, will get a little stat boost. Pretty cool uh, little feature. I got a whole bunch of people coming back from training. As you can see, that just leveled up Bat Tato here. Uh, but it takes their... Um, it takes their... Uh, a mood way way down when you train them mm -hmm. so you always got to be careful about that as you can see Laura has gained a whole bunch in her stats I'm going to show you guys the whole class system right here so I can change my class and as you see you want to max them out uh, in their levels on different areas and then you can upgrade them to the next uh, highest tier and so it's important to kind of spread your characters out along multiple stats it's very similar to game dev story uh, in that fashion um, let's go ahead and put her down. Let's uh, look at... What else have we not seen? Uh, let's look at what I can forge. As you can see, I've unlocked some more weapons, but there's still way more to go. I think I only have one really super high tier thing that's Ruined Blade. As you can see, the, here are the stat curves here, so it's going to gain a whole bunch more when we work on that uh, weapon. You can also see that I've unlocked a whole bunch of different types of weapons that you can work with. And there's these things called unique weapons. They should look pretty familiar. A busted sword, a phase gun, power lift chains, and scratching staff. You'll have legendary um, warriors, adventurers, whatever, come to your shop, and then they'll ask you to make a specific weapon for them. So like the busted sword, we had a guy who looked suspiciously like Cloud Strife, uh, I think his name was Claude, showed up, and uh, he asked us to make him a sword. And so you have to make a specific sword with a certain threshold of uh, stats on it. So I think he, in particular, he wanted a lot of attack on his. Um, we have research. So here with research, with the artifacts that you gain from going out and exploring, uh, you gain, uh, you can take those items, combine them together, and research some new item. Uh, here I've got a whole new tier of these things because I think I had just unlocked a new area. So there's a whole bunch of really cool stuff that I could work on here. Four days, two hours. That sounds like a long time. Must be good. The longer the time frame on this usually means the more powerful the weapon. Um, so when I, if I wanted to do this, I'd click on one of my people. And as you can see, the person with the highest stat associated with that item, they get a bonus to the amount of time it takes. As in they reduce the time it takes in order to uh, uh, research that item. And then that'll go into our available forged items. We also have contracts. These are quick ways of making money. Um, oftentimes the way that I use contracts is if my some of my characters are out on vacation or they're out training or something and I just some, have some people just hanging around, I'll um, use a contract so that they can gain a little bit of experience from working on it and also you gain a tiny bit of money, but it's nowhere near as much money as you get from selling um, weapons. 
then we have our shop upgrades. And here is where you can get all kinds of stuff. Uh, so like, let's look at the decoration. I've got a couple of different statues here. I earned this one here that we have, this Kratos statue, by helping out a guy who looks suspiciously like Kratos. Um, I have a little plant on the ground over here, but I could switch it out for any of these plants uh, if I were to pay for those. Um, I have a couple of things that go on the wall, um, which is like this, um, the scream um, painting here, but I have, instead I have a uh, portal painting up there for helping the person who looks suspiciously like Shell from Portal. Um, here you can see I've upgraded all the capacities on my different uh, areas. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Let's look at the world map really quickly. Oh. We just got a weapon request. So this is a specific weapon request. These will pop up from time to time. You have a time limit. You have a weapon type or some kind of whatever it is that they want. It might be any weapon, but plus 300 attack or, you know, a dagger with these stats, etc. Uh, usually the reward for these things are pretty good compared to what they cost um, in order to make. So, like, this is just any old bow, so I could make the cheapest bow that there is, not really put a lot of effort into it, sell it to him, and make a good amount of money. So we're going to actually go ahead and just set that to go. We're going to set us making a bow. We're going to make the cheapest bow, because he didn't say anything about stats. And we're going to go ahead and bring in everybody else. Just put them down. Real quick. Iggy Iron Spud. Uh, come on, Volander. Oh, and he just leveled up to max. So let's see what Volander's at. On this class. Yeah, so I max out all these with Volander, so I'd probably make him an alchemist um, and let him level up that one. Okay, and let's boost speed. Why not? Broomhead, you go for it. You look an awful lot like the Typhoon. So as you can see, way more stats getting boosted now when you're higher level. Like a really crazy amount. Uh, and his mood was really high, so we got seven hits out of that. So look at those stats on there. 1,152, just like for free off of that. So, as you can see, the game gets, you know, kind of exponentially wider. And I'm not even at the highest level. I'm only, I think, like, maybe about halfway through. Um, so, outside of that, I just really quickly wanted to show you this whole, like, thing about exploring and whatnot. So, I clicked on Explore. I find this place. You can see here are all the items so far that I've unlocked in this region, which is actually everything. I could click on somebody, send them out to Explore, and, lo and behold, uh, I'm going to go to the map, and we're going to see that Laura is there doing exploring. I could also send people on vacation if their mood's not great. I could grab Bulk, send him out there, and when we go back out to the world map, we'll see that he is in fact there uh, on vacation. And so he's going to come back with his mood doing a lot better. All right, y'all. Well, I think that at this point, I don't want to go too deep into this. I just wanted to give you guys a showcase because I'm loving this game. I think it is tons of fun, and I'm definitely going to play it all the way through. I didn't feel like it's the kind of game that really fits a series because there is a lot of grinding in between. But it's not that that grinding isn't fun. I actually really greatly enjoy the grinding uh, aspect of this game. It's just that that kind of thing doesn't really make for very inspired or interesting um, let's play conversation, we'll say. Um, so here is this last part of making weapons now is we can actually add enchantments. And this is basically just a flat stat boost that you can add to an item. So let's say I wanted to add a little bit more speed. I'm going to choose a cheap one because we know that this is for a contract that doesn't actually need the stats. But you can add a nice big bonus to a specific stat um, on the end of it based on items that you've picked up in the uh, ex explorations. So now I click on this contract up here, hit submit weapon, grab that, deliver that to him. Boom, free 7801. Uh, 7801 uh, monies, starches. Um, and I'll just show you what a research looks like as well. So, Broomhead's gonna go over here. We're gonna have this little secret thing pass away, and then he's gonna go into some kind of occultish little portal. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, but yeah, so like I was saying, I love this game. It's tons of fun, and uh, I think you guys will probably enjoy it. Let me know what you thought about this video, or more importantly, let me know if you decided to play this game, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback on that. If you guys really, really want me to play some more of this, let me know. Although, like I said, I don't know if it really matches with the style that I'm going for of kind of a Let's Play type game. But anyways, I've rambled on long enough. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a like, a favorite, and subscribe to the channel. My name has been Price, and I will see y'all next time.